How are you? You are blessed. Hallelujah. Mm. So, we just want to quickly take it. 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. Let's take 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Mm. Many of us, we, we say we believe, but we don't know how to express our word. Huh? Our belief. Hmm? You, you, you say you believe, but it's impossible to express that belief or to show that belief that, ah, I believe it, but ha, how to go about it now? Hallelujah. I think you can agree with me. Many people say, I believe, but to show that you really believe, I don't know what is happening there. There is a very big challenge. Hallelujah. So this is what we want to talk about just for 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's open Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. That no one could what? Could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? You listen to these words. Have you come to what? Before the what? For the appointed time, meaning to say demons, they know that there is a certain appointed time that has been set by God for them to be utterly destroyed forever. Hallelujah. Mm. So now one can ask now this question. Ah, ah. So if there is an appointed time for these things to be destroyed, so how can we survive now? <laughs> because they are there. Hallelujah. They are there to answer this before we proceed. Now, Jesus met other two demon possessed men. These two demon possessed, listen, it's, it's there, it's in the same story. Listen to this. It's in the same story. Here. Listen here. Verse number 29. What do you want with us, son of David? They shouted. If you come here to torture us before the appointed time, some distance from them, listen to this, some distance from them, a large head of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the head of pigs. Into the heads of what? So this will tell you that demons... They cannot operate without a physical body. They cannot operate without a what? I can't hear you people. A physical body. They need physical body to express their characteristics. If one is a prostitute, you see by having an affair with this one, having an affair with this one, with this one, with you double cross you. You understand what I'm, I'm talking about? Mm. All of you, you, you start to be confused. Ah, ah, oh, you are in love with me now. You are in love with him now. You're... The girl is expressing the demonic spirit of prostitution. This is how this evil spirit express their characters. Hallelujah. Mm. Listen to this. Verse 30. Some distance from them, a large head of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the head of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And the wall head rushed down the step bank, the steep bank, into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this including what had happened to the demon-possessed man. Verse 34. 
Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. <laughs> they pleaded with him to what? Meaning to leave their town. No, 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 you are not, you are not supposed to be here, you. Go, 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 go. Now, behind every situation, there's a demon. Tell me about behind every situation, behind every challenge, there's an evil spirit. Behind all predicaments we may talk about in today's life, there is an evil spirit. This is why I gave an example of a high lord, whereby you see a person getting involved with more than one person. This is to tell you that the situation in this person is not normal. The challenge in this person is not what? It's not normal. In another words, we say you are what? You are abnormal. Hallelujah. So if you are abnormal, that means you are insane somehow. Eh? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's a like short. Hallelujah. Yes. You are not yourself. So behind every challenge, there is an evil spirit. An evil spirit. So Jesus, because he knew how to express his belief, though he heard that there are two demon-possessed men, very violent the way you are going, he did not listen to whatever people say. He went that direction. To express his what? His belief. When they saw him at a distance, they ran towards him and said, ah, 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 what have you come to do with us before our time? You have come to torture us. It's not at the time. It's not at the time. Let me say this to you. Demons are afraid of a believer who is grounded in the word of God. Demons, they fear a believer that is grounded in the what? I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you people. Not in, in the word of your, um, your mother, the word of your father, the word of your grandfather. No, 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 no. In the word of God. Demons are not afraid of you because you are smart, because you are intelligent, because you passed the school, you made it, you, or you earn a lot of salary. No, they don't mind about that. They are only afraid of a believer that is grounded in the word of God. <laughs> if you are not grounded in the word of God, your language is not different from the people of the world. By so doing, demons, they listen to your confession. And with they catch that, ah, your talking is of the world. You are not grounded in the word. They jump on you, afflict you, torture you. But they are not afraid of you because you are smart. They are not afraid of you because you earn a lot of salary or you give a bunch of money in church. <laughs> they are not even afraid of you because you speak fluent English. You say, because I speak fluent English, they cannot torment me in a lie. Demons, they fear a believer that is grounded in the word of God. The question is, are you grounded in the word? Are you grounded in the word? We hide behind bits and pieces of scriptures. Because many of us, when we read the Bible, we pick bits and pieces of the scriptures that are favoring our condition of life. That are favoring our what? I can't hear you. If you want breakthrough, money you pick the scriptures only that talk about money you hide behind the scriptures that are talking about money only this is what i say picking bits and pieces of scriptures if we are to grow spiritually we are to read the bible not selectively get me very well not what not selectively Choosing bits and pieces of scriptures 
because you know you want healing you hide behind the word healing healing you go to church you have really healing healing how about the other scriptures such people are not mindful of holiness purity faithfulness because they only depend on those scriptures that favor their condition of life if you study the word of god in such a manner when devil comes to attack you will not ask whether you are sick or not he will not ask you whether you have money or not. He will not ask you whether you are married or not. No. Satan, when he comes to attack, he attack a Christian that is not solid, grounded in the word of God. You see what happens in our lives now? Once a, a, a challenge hits you, the real you surfaces. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if a challenge comes, I will, I will know who you are. Right now, we are hiding our character. The real character, we hide it under carpet. You pretend to be holy, thou holiest. When you walk, you walk like holy mama, holy papa. Come Satan to hit you. Come Satan to what? To hit you. The real you will surface. We will know the real you. Your behavior. Your character, your real character will surface. Your response will be that of a violent person. Right now we are busy, we are hiding behind you. Healing, breakthrough. We pretend to be real Christians. Breakthrough verses. Jesus was not hiding under certain scriptures. No, Jesus was himself the real foundation of the word. He was the word himself. Well, you, this is where we are getting it wrong. Right now, you are here. You don't know what kind of demon is attacking you. And that demon doesn't want you to depend on bits and pieces of scriptures. You are to take the whole word of God. But now, you, you, you look at yourself. You, you, you pick some bits and pieces of the word. You say, ah, oh, me, I don't want this. I will deliver it here. Deliver, deliver. No, 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 no. You go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy what? But don't forget you are in the world. Demons will come after you. In behind every condition of life, every challenge, or any condition of life, let me put it this way, any condition of life, there is a spirit behind. Right now, the condition that I am right now, in preaching the gospel, there must be a spirit behind that is pushing me to do this. Are you getting what I'm saying? Same applies with you. You may be in a challenge. That challenge behind it, there is an evil force. That's why Jesus, when he was looking at Peter, Peter confessing a language that Jesus was not understanding. He said, ah, no, 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 no. Come. Don't talk like that. Come here. Don't talk like that. Why do you say you're going to die? Jesus turned his back and said, get me behind me who? Satan. Jesus was saving the voice. The voice. Our voice can tell whether we are spirit-filled or we are grounded in the word of God or not. Your language, the way you talk. Do you know right now, if I stand here, as I'm preaching right now, if I'm not filled by the spirit, there's nothing you will hear here. If I'm not grounded in the word of God, no matter how much I preach and sweat, that preaching will not even change your life. This is why some of you here now, you're saying, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you feeling? You're saying, eh, eh, eh. Hmm? what is happening? That is to tell you that the preaching behind there's a what? There's a spirit. There's a certain force behind. You say, eh. if I get closer to you right now, you feel like pushing back. This is to tell you that uh uh, the man is not what? Alone. It's not what? Alone. So you too, the way you behave outside there, people will know that you, you are not alone. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So behind every challenge, there's an evil spirit. Behind every sickness, there is an evil spirit. Behind every disease, there is an evil spirit. We are to know what to address before we attack. Right now, you, you, just, you just fight the air. You, you are a boxer who's just punching the air. You don't know the real enemy you are fighting. You just... Oh, what are you punching? Whom are you punching? You can't see the person you are punching. 
You don't see the person you are punching. This is why right now you find someone is fallen into a temptation. All of us, instead of rescuing the person, we, we tend to be enemies. We start to attack before even we sit down and ask the spirit, what is going on with this person? Why this? What has happened? It may take time to get the answer. Patience pays. If we be patient, we may find the real truth. How can a gentleman in Mark chapter 5, a man, a gentleman, go and sleep in the cemetery and become violent and shout in the night? Anyone who passes there will fight them. I just to tell you that the man was under control of a demon. Normally you cannot sleep in the graveyard. How can you sleep in the graveyard? The place of the dead. You cannot sleep there unless if you are a ritualist. If you are a ritualist, you, 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 they will give you those concussion to make your heart strong so that you, you will not be afraid of anything. You go and sleep there. A gentleman like that, possessed by 2,000 demons, behind every challenge, there is an evil spirit. You see your child misbehaving, see a spirit behind. Though you may chasten, but take the child for deliverance. Because people who kill today, we may think that are uh, uh, whatever. Mm -mm. Sit down with that person. If you want to see, when you sit down with the person, try to investigate, they will tell you that we have been hearing some certain voices. You may be seated right now here. Do you know that the person that may be sitting close to is hearing some certain voices you are not hearing? Go and steal. Steal. I will not steal. Two, two years you'll be refusing. Three years you'll be refusing. If you don't say it out, eh? every time when I'm seated, I feel like to fight my wife. You find someone, your wife has not done anything. You just say, eh? It's Uncle Lofa. What, what is this? Wah, 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 wah. No. It's not that the person wants to beat, but there's a certain voice inside. Say, beat her, kill her, kill him, kill him. You say, ah, I will not kill. Why, why should I kill? Kill, I said, kill. Ah, I will not kill. You resist, you resist, you resist. Up until you open up, say, no, no, no. no. There's a spirit that is telling me to kill. There's a spirit that is telling me to steal. A spirit that is telling me to sleep with someone's husband. This is when you get your deliverance. Look at your neighbor. Say, behind your character, behind your behavior, there's an evil spirit. So today I think you are answered. The way you behave sometimes. Mm. This message will answer you. You feel like marrying more than one woman. I can marry three, four. I can go for them. Ah, no. Five, five, six, seven. Yes. Why can't you sit down with him? You ask your, your grandfather. He will tell you. That, mm -mm. There's a spirit of being unsatisfied. I needed more than five women. And if you are married to four women, you feel like a king. You're walking like this. Take the children to school. Zero. You see what happens. This is, well, this is how Satan is destroying people. He, he, he can allow you to see women, to propose, and they say yes, yes, yes. But he will not show you after marriage what will happen. The responsibilities that will come. Marry 20. Take them to school. <laughs> Are you here? So what is it that is pushing you to do that? There's an evil spirit. Why should you marry four women? Can you give your heart to three women? You marry this woman, you marry another one. Should, will you treat them equally? You can't give them the same love. It's just a spirit of being unsatisfied. You still need more. Behind every challenge, there's a word. I can't hear you. This is spirit. Look at this person. Listen to this one again. Chapter 9, verse 32. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. You listen to this? The man could not talk. He, he was dumb and deaf. He couldn't talk. He couldn't hear. After demon is cast out, man, the man now is starting to talk. He's able to talk. He's able to hear. 
That is to show you that behind the affliction of this person, there was a what? I can't hear you. A spirit. You're not able to talk. You say, mm -mm. I say mm -mm. Behind that, mm -mm, there's an evil spirit. You are educated, no job. Behind your joblessness, there is an evil spirit. You are very beautiful, very beautiful woman. When you walk here, men who are very far away from you, they say, wow, what a wonderful woman. What a, what a, hey, can't see this kind of woman in Africa. Where is she coming from? Maybe she's from United States of America. Look at her. She will tell you 45 years, no marriage. No man is proposed. Zero, not even one who will say, hi, Lord. They are afraid of her when they see her. Demons, can, they can do that. You, you, you be a wonderful woman and they come and clothe you. You dress properly, you bath, you pour perfume, four, four, four. When you walk here, man will say, how are you? Fine. If, they, if it's time to say, hey, 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 can I take you out? You say, uh, all right, sorry, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I, I will see you when? <laughs> that evil spirit makes them, if they talk to you, their heart will be pumping. Papa, 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 papa. They are afraid of you. Say, hey, this woman, I'll come tomorrow. Tomorrow again, I'll come tomorrow. Up until they give up and leave you. So you end up crying. Why me? Why me? <laughs> Why me? Wait. If we sit down with you and talk to you and ask you, what is happening at night when you go to bed? Is there any man that comes and sleep with you? Make love in dream? You say, yes. There's a man, tall one, giant. Yes, very hairy. He will come and say, you are my wife. Sleep with me. Behind every challenge, there is an evil spirit. It's not normal. How can you be beautiful? No marriage. How can you be handsome? You are working very hard. You are a hard working man. No marriage. You are very old now. You are barren. No child. There is an evil spirit behind and for you to be delivered, you are the first to realize that, ah, my situation is not normal. If you admit that my situation is not normal, this is when deliverance comes in. Because identifying that there is a problem, that's number one, deliverance. To identify that you are in a problem is what? Number one, deliverance. You are on number one stage of deliverance. Once you identify that there is a problem, because many people, they don't realize or identify that they're in a problem. They're just living just like that. You, you are the one to see that hey, this man is in a problem. But he can't see that he's in a messy. He's just living in normally. He's taking that life normal. Identifying that there is a problem is number one deliverance. It will push you to seek for solution. So if I may ask you, do you admit that problem that you have, there's an evil spirit behind? These are what we call uninvited guests. Even though you have not done wrong, they just come in. Once they see that your, your heart is empty, they just enter and start to torment you. No matter what people say, if they take you to which doctor, wherever, they are wasting their time. Which doctor cannot deliver you? Which doctor cannot deliver you? Rather, they worsen your problem. They will worsen your what? They will worsen your problem. Right now, you have, a, you, have, you have poverty spirit. You call there, you say, I have poverty spirit. After they give you concussion, that concussion will result to what? They say, kill your, your first daughter so that you may have what? Man, behind every problem, there is an evil spirit. These gentlemen were very, very, very handsome. I believe when they were growing up, they had vision about their future. But along the way, something just happened. Demon entered and attacked them. As you were growing, you had a wonderful vision for your life. Wonderful vision for your life. You're saying, if I grow, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to do this, I want to... It just vanished. Today, you are just living like a, a, a mad person. You're just... You no know vision, no what? If I may tell you, the poorest person in this world is not the person who is not educated. It's not the person who's, who's not employed. The poorest person in the world is a person without a vision or a dream. If you don't have a vision or a dream, you are the poorest person in the world. Take note of this. 
every dream that comes in your life, it has a meaning. That dream may be something maybe you don't understand, but ah, maybe woman, apana woman. That dream, if you write it down one day, it will surely speak. Don't be lazy to write down your dreams. Never be lazy to jot down your dreams. They speak. One day they will speak. I pray that God will visit your dream of many years in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever is delaying your dream to come to pass, out in the name of Jesus Christ. So I, I dreamt something 20 years ago. I dreamt myself owning a supermarket, but today I'm owning Musica. No! There's something that is holding you. I pray against that spirit. Live in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will never pass the stage of that dream. No, no, no. You pass through that stage. You may not realize it, but you will see that your life is going through your dreams. Amen. <laughs> right now, I am the product of my dreams. What I'm doing right now, it's product of my dreams. It's the result of my dreams. So the, the poorest person is a person who doesn't have a dream. I've heard many people, I can't dream. I, I can't even dream. I, I just sleep and wake up, no dream. You, if you see that you don't dream, you need deliverance. It's not that you, dream, you don't dream. You dream, but something comes and steal your dreams. Make you forget your dreams. No one in this world who can say, I don't dream. Mm -mm. A person who will die maybe tomorrow or this month or next month, whatever, or anyone who have died today or yesterday, if we had a chance to ask them, a chance to ask them, what happened before your death? They will tell you that I once had a dream about this death. No one can just depart this world before you see something in a dream. It's a lie. God communicates with everyone you are about to go. When you are sleeping, you may see that mm, you are now talking to people who are dead every time. It's a sign that your departure is very close. You may fail to interpret it, but you have seen it in a dream. You see yourself in a room or in a vacuum, empty vacuum, you are inside, it's very empty and it's closed. You are gasping for air. Say, yeah, help me, help me, yeah, help me, help me. They're trying to tell you that one day you are going to find yourself locked, maybe in an accident, cow, pop, 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 lock the door. You will die, then no one will come and help you. You will suffocate and die. No one in this world, no one will depart this world before you see a sign. Even before they fire you at work, you will see something. You can agree with me that one day I saw a dream where I was fighting with my boss, wrestling with my boss or whatever, or was whatever. They are trying to tell you that something is coming if I'm speaking to you. So never you say, I don't dream. No, 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 no. If you are not a dreamer, you have a demon who will deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing that happens in this world without a dream or a vision. This Two demon possessed people were the people who were attacked because of their vision, their dream. You see, people who are being attacked severely, they are the people with a powerful dream, a powerful vision. They don't just attack you if you don't have a strong vision. No. Look at Joseph, how he suffered because of his vision. Look at Daniel, how he suffered in Shadrach, Michigan, and Pedniko because of the vision, the dream. You must have a dream. Tell your neighbor, have a dream. Say, have a vision. Mm. So behind your problem, there's a demon. There's a demon. And they don't want you to know what is going to happen tomorrow. They don't want you to know. So now, to wrap the message. Before you come to conclusion, please, take your time. Sit down. Analyze the situation. Assess the situation. You may find that the person that you are busy blaming, attacking, whatever, is being influenced by a certain evil spirit. Those who are calling you names right now, you may find that behind them, there's a stupid demon. There's a what? <laughs> there's a stupid evil spirit. And they know. They know. If they want to, they know. They know how to deal with you. They will give you some thoughts that are, the witch is your grandmother. They will bring your grandmother in the night. 
you are sleeping because you are eager to see dreams, eh? they will bring your grandmother. You see your grandmother jumping on you, choking your neck. You will just come, you say, ah, ah, you wake up in the morning, you say, ah, my grandmother wants to kill me. She's a witch. She's a witch. The grandmother is just innocent. They just use their image. They just use their wash. So thank you. God bless you.